everybody. My name is Dorina Mindzuri. I'm an endocrinologist from Albania. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers and Dr. Flora Charles for giving me the opportunity to um, share my experience with you. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the screening test we use for thyroid dysfunction and is TSH always sufficient or not. Uh, we know that thyroid pathologies are present in a significant part of population worldwide and their prevalence varies depending on different factors like iodine intake, geographical factors, ethnicity, age, smoking status, genetics, endocrine disruptors, and uh, recently uh, we know that the novel biological agents we're using also influence. Over a billion people worldwide live in iodine deficient areas uh, which are mostly in mountainous regions and uh, these differences in your diet nutrition play a major role in the prevalence of thyroid dysfunction. We know that nodular thyroid disorders are more prevalent in your diet deficiency areas while autoimmune thyroid disorders like Hashimoto thyroiditis or grave disease occur more frequently in Iodine repleted populations. Here is a picture from the Nature Reviews in Endocrinology, which shows the prevalence of ovarian hypothyroidism worldwide. And we see that the dysfunction is much more prevalent in areas of iodine deficiency. Uh, the areas marked with dark blue have the highest prevalence, reaching to 4.2%. And this is another picture which shows the prevalence of overt hyperthyroidism, which is uh, lower compared to, to hypothyroidism and uh, with a maximal frequency to 1.2%. Uh, In the developed world, the prevalence of undiagnosed thyroid disease is likely falling because we are testing for thyroid dysfunction uh, in early phase and um, we have a tendency to initiate the treatment um, at lower thresholds of uh, TSH uh, changes. However, in uh, developing countries and um, in your diet deficiency areas much more uh, studies and uh, vigilance is needed. There are different guidelines on how to screen for thyroid gland uh, problems, but the TSH is the most commonly ordered test and other tests like free T3 or free T4 and thyroid antibodies are only ordered where when TSH is not in uh, the normal range. However, the studies uh, are showing that patients can benefit from uh, early treatment of uh, subclinical hypothyroidism, um, especially in terms of lipid profile regulation, uh, reduction of cardiovascular risk, or uh, infertility and um, the benefit of pregnant women because the presence of uh, anti-TPO, anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies or undetected subclinical hypothyroidism can cause infertility or pregnancy problems such as uh, high blood pressure or toxemia. The aim of our study was to evaluate the role of other tests than TSH like uh, thyroid antibodies or thyroid ultrasound as screening tests for early detection of uh, thyroid dysfunction. This is a cross-sectional uh, study performed during a two-year period in Albania uh, which is considered a country with mild to moderate iodine deficiency. It is still a iodine deficiency region, 
although we have initiated um, salt iodization program from uh, 2008 uh, we assess the prevalence of thyroid disorders and thyroid antibodies in 458 individuals and measured all thyroid hormones thyroid antibodies anti thyroid peroxidase and antithyroglobulin with electrochemiluminescence method and also we uh, did the ultrasound of thyroid gland for detecting any structure abnormalities like nodules heterogenicity hypoechogenicity micronodular pattern and characteristics of blood flow and uh, the population we studied was um, uh, 800 percent for males and uh, 20 20 percent males um, the mean value of TSH was 3.2 uh, with uh, uh, mean age at uh, 45 years old and what was interesting uh, was that um, antithyroid antibodies at least one of them was present in 26% of males and only 11.8% uh, of males 88% uh, of individuals were L-thyroid which mean their TSH, FT3 and FreeT4 were uh, within the normal range uh, we found a low prevalence of hyperthyroidism, overt hyperthyroidism and overt uh, hypothyroidism, uh, respectively 1.1 and 3.1 percent. Uh, but we found a, a considerable prevalence of subclinical hypothyroidism, 5.5 uh, percent. And the prevalence of positive uh, antibodies within this population was uh, 25%. And L thyroid subjects, which uh, had their hormones within the normal range, had 25% uh, of them had positive antibodies for thyroid gland. Um, interesting um, results from. Um, uh, thyroid ultrasound where we found a good uh, correlation of uh, uh, anti-TPO antibodies with um, hypoechogenicity and uh, heterogenicity and micronodular uh, pattern in ultrasound and we found the most uh, sensitive um, marker for autoimmune thyroid disorders was decreased echogenicity while um, the micronodularity was a specific uh, parameter for uh, autoimmune Hashimoto thyroiditis. So as conclusion we found that the subclinical hypothyroidism was very frequent in a population uh, in a region with uh, iodine deficiency like ours. Five to 5.5%. Uh, we also found um, uh, prevalence of a high prevalence of positive thyroid antibodies uh, with a ratio 2.2 to 1 for males to males. And the most interesting fact were that uh, uh, the presence of uh, anti TPO antibodies correlated well with the family history for Hashimoto thyroiditis. 78% of individuals were positive uh, for uh, these antibodies, had um, in a family history for Hashimoto thyroiditis, and 23% uh, of them uh, had no history. And we found that 25.5% of L thyroid individuals had the uh, presence of positive 
antibodies and the question is what is the role of these antibodies in alpharoid individuals are there more at risk for uh, developing thyroid dysfunction in the future as conclusion we can say that the level of anti-tpo antibodies correlates well with the degree of lymphocytic infiltration of the thyroid gland of persons who have normal uh, thyroid hormone values and anti-TPO antibodies are more prevalent and present in individuals who have family history for Hashimoto thyroiditis. Hypoechogenicity, heterogenicity and micronodular pattern in the thyroid ultrasound are associated with a significantly higher anti-TPO antibody activity and uh, the prevalence of antibodies in L-thyroid individuals in a region with a mild to moderate iodine deficiency which has initiated a, a iodization program is relatively high. Uh, has this iodization program had any influence to, to the presence of high level of uh, thyroid antibodies there are further studies needed to show that uh, testing for anti-tpo antibodies in l thyroid subjects can be used to identify groups at risk for developing hypothyroidism aiming for early detection and treatment of them most of these individuals do not manifest any specific symptoms and frequently pass without being diagnosed. So we would recommend that um, all individuals with normal TSH uh, that has one risk factor like below uh, should be tested for anti-TPO antibodies um, to monitor their uh, thyroid function in the future for early detection uh, of thyroid dysfunction and uh, early initiation of treatment and these people are pregnant women or women who desire to a pregnancy patients with other autoimmune diseases individuals with thyroid changes in ultrasound examination such as decreased echogenicity uh, subjects on medications such as amiodarone and relatives of patients with autoimmune thyroid involvement. And from my Tirana, thank you.